IBM used to be the leading technology company in too many fields to count, but has lately stagnated and lost its top positions to companies such as Microsoft, Intel and Nvidia. But there's one very risky and uncertain technology which IBM is banking on to be the future of computing and to some extent, even technology itself. They've been the leader among quantum computing companies for the past three years, with only unverified Chinese companies claiming to have beaten or at least matched them in performance. This week, IBM introduced the Eagle, a new 127-qubit processor, as well as blueprints for IBM Quantum System 2, Big Blue's next-generation quantum system. The announcement, made during the IBM Quantum Summit, emphasizes IBM's hardware advancements. IBM released its hardware and software roadmaps last year. IBM expects frictionless quantum computing to be available by 2025, enabling a wide range of applications that will outperform traditional computing. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you what exactly this new quantum computer is, what its capabilities are, how they managed to surpass all these other tech titans, and finally, what this could mean for the field of computing and the company of IBM itself. Quantum computing is a hot market, as seen by the rise in IONQ stock following agreements with Accenture and SoftBank. Honeywell Quantum and Cambridge Quantum will likely join forces and go public. IBM also expects Quantum to become a significant component of its business as it develops the ecosystem. According to Bob Souter, Vice President of AI, Blockchain, and Quantum Solutions at IBM, Eagle represents a significant step in scaling quantum computing and is the company's first processor to hold more than 100 qubits. The Eagle serves as a reminder of where we are and that everything is on track. IBM has around 50 quantum systems deployed, including two installed outside of the United States. Eagle was built at IBM's own fabrication facilities, however Souter remarked that production numbers are low. For the time being, IBM is employing its CPUs on its own systems. According to IBM, Eagle makes use of novel approaches that allow control components to be placed on many physical layers while preserving qubits on a single layer. Because of the nature of qubits and how they all need to function together, building quantum computers is far more challenging. As a result of the Eagle 3D packaging architecture, there are more usable qubits available. Souter also stated that Eagle cannot be fully emulated on a traditional computer. They had to combine and improve on techniques developed in previous generations of IBM quantum processors to create a processor architecture that includes advanced 3D packaging techniques and that they are confident will form the backbone of processors up to and including their planned over 1000 qubit Condor processor. Eagle is built on their heavy hexagonal qubit layout, first seen in our Falcon processor, in which qubits communicate with two or three neighbors as though they were positioned on the edges and corners of tessellated hexagons. This precise connection lowered the chance of errors caused by interactions between close qubits, resulting in significant gains in functional processor yield. Eagle will be made accessible to select IBM Quantum Network subscribers in December. IBM also demonstrated its Quantum System 2, which is intended to work with processors that have more than 1000 qubits. IBM Quantum System 2 will be more modular, allowing several CPUs to be housed and cooled in a single system. Customers may alter and test elements of the Quantum System 2 architecture without impacting the complete arrangement. IBM's newest quantum machine will be operational at IBM Research in 2023. In December 2018, Google AI experts performed a computation on Google's greatest quantum processor. They were able to replicate the calculation on a standard laptop. The same test was again performed on an enhanced version of the quantum device in January. To recreate the outcome this time, they needed to utilize a powerful desktop computer. By February, there were no classical computers in the facility capable of simulating quantum counterparts. To accomplish so, the researchers had to request time on Google's massive server network. This fast advancement has given rise to Nevin's Law, a new type of rule that describes how rapidly quantum computers outperform classical ones. The rule started as an internal observation before Nevin announced it at the Google Quantum Spring Symposium in May. He stated there that quantum computers are acquiring processing capacity relative to classical ones at a twofold exponential pace, a mind-bogglingly rapid rate. 
With double exponential growth, nothing appears to be happening, nothing appears to be happening, and then whoops, you're in a new planet. That's what we're dealing with here. According to Nevin, the double exponential pace at which quantum computers are gaining on classical ones is the consequence of two exponential variables combining. The first is that quantum computers have an inherent exponential advantage over classical computers. If a quantum circuit contains four quantum bits, for example, a classical circuit with 16 conventional bits is required to attain similar processing capability. Even if quantum technology never progressed, this would be true. The fast advancement of quantum computers is the source of the second exponential component. According to Nevin, Google's top quantum processors have lately improved at an exponential rate. This fast advancement has been fueled by a decrease in the error rate in quantum circuits. Nevin said that by lowering the mistake rate, the engineers were able to develop bigger quantum processors. If classical computers require exponentially more processing power to replicate quantum processors, and quantum processors get exponentially more powerful over time, the connection between quantum and classical machines becomes doubly exponential. This does not persuade everyone. For one thing, traditional computers aren't going away. Even though Moore's law may be coming to an end, ordinary computer processors continue to advance. Furthermore, computer scientists are continuously developing more efficient algorithms to assist traditional computers in keeping up. The performance of an efficient quantum calculation that cannot be reproduced in any acceptable period of time on even the most powerful classical computer is a primary aim in the field of quantum computing currently the Summit Supercomputer at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Google has been particularly public about its pursuit of this milestone, known as quantum supremacy, among the several research organizations creating quantum computers. Once a stable quantum computer is constructed, machine learning will speed exponentially, potentially cutting the time it takes to answer a problem from hundreds of thousands of years to seconds. Remember when IBM's Deep Blue computer beat chess champion Garry Kasparov in 1997? It gained a competitive advantage by analyzing 200 million possible movements per second. A quantum computer could calculate 1 trillion motions per second. Google announced publicly a few years ago that it would create a workable quantum computer within the next five years and that it would achieve quantum supremacy with a 50 qubit quantum computer. Top supercomputers can still do everything a 5 to 20 qubit quantum computer can but they will be eclipsed by a machine with 50 qubits, which will achieve supremacy at that time. Shortly after that announcement, IBM stated that commercial quantum machines will be available to enterprises within a year. Chemical processes have a quantum aspect because they produce highly entangled quantum superposition states. However, fully evolved quantum computers would have no trouble analyzing even the most complicated procedures. Google has already dabbled in this area by replicating the energy of hydrogen molecules. This means more efficient goods, from solar cells to pharmaceutical treatments, and notably fertilizer manufacture. Given that fertilizer represents for 2% of world energy use, the implications for energy and the environment would be enormous. The difficulty of factoring huge numbers into primes now underpins the majority of internet security. While this is now achievable by utilizing digital computers to look through every potential element, the enormous time required makes breaking the code costly and impracticable. Quantum computers can execute such factoring significantly more efficiently than digital computers, implying that such security approaches will be rendered obsolete in the near future. New cryptography methods are being developed, though it may take some time, in August 2015, the NSA began introducing a list of quantum-resistant cryptography methods that would withstand quantum computers, and in April 2016, the National Institute of Standards and Technology began a four- to six-year public evaluation process. Even while a true quantum computer is still a long way off, it is evident that the race has begun. So far, quantum supremacy has remained elusive, often appearing to be just around the corner, but never arriving. But, if Nevin's law is correct, it can't be far off. Nevin wouldn't disclose when the Google team expects to achieve quantum supremacy, but he did indicate it may happen soon. So, what is your opinion IBM's new path towards quantum supremacy and potentially regaining its crown in the world of computing? Do you think that quantum computing actually has any kind of potential or are they investing into the wrong things? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it.
Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.